Hi, I'm Mrs. Applepresser and I'm an artist. I've been an artist all my life and I feel very lucky because all the work I've ever done is in the art world. This is Blue. He's not saying very much today, but um, he's my helper. He's around me all the time. Right, Blue? Yeah, he's a little nervous right now and he'll talk to you later. Anyways, when I worked at the Cleveland Museum of Art, a big part of my job was Parade the Circle. I don't know if any of you have seen it, maybe you've been in it, but it's quite an amazing parade that goes on with 1,500 people in it, and it's completely pure art. So I have some images that I'm going to show you of my costumes that I made to be in the parade. That was one of my jobs, is to create costumes. I'm here today because we're going to do a project together, but unfortunately I'm going to stay here with Blue and you're going to do the project with your art teachers. But I'm going to explain the whole thing to you right now. We're going to do a project that deals with portraits. There are two kinds of portraits. One's a portrait and one is a self-portrait. <clears throat> and you might want to pause for a minute to talk about what's the difference. And when I, you do that, I'm going to talk to Blue and we'll be right back. <laughs> probably figured out that the difference between a portrait and a self-portrait is an artist such as you, if you paint one of your friends or maybe your parents or somebody you know, you are painting a portrait. But if you paint yourself, a picture of yourself, you are painting a self-portrait. A long time ago, before cameras, before telephones, before any technology, if you could imagine, Artists would paint people because they needed to have an image of them to hang on their walls, their castles, so people in the families and people in history can see who these people are. And a lot of times, people would dress up. Who am I? Am I a fancy lady? Am I a sports person? Am I a musician? Do I like to read? What do I want to show you about who I am? I would always have blue in my painting, I think, if someone was to do my painting. My portrait. Anyways, as an artist, you are going to be doing self-portraits. You're painting yourselves, not on your face, on paper, and I'm gonna tell you how you're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about colors. That's how you are going to describe yourself. We don't need to see soccer balls, or hockey sticks, or footballs, or books. You're going to tell everybody who you are through the colors that you choose to use. And you're probably thinking, what is she talking about? What I mean is, when, you, when I say the color blue, besides thinking of my dog, what do you think when you think, think of blue? What if I were to say yellow? How do you feel about the color yellow? What about red? So maybe you want to talk about these colors and how they make you feel and come back. And we'll be back. Right, blue? <laughs> okay, we're back. Blue had a lot to say about that. So, um, I'm going to show you two paintings. One is actually a print, silk screen, and another one is a painting. The first one I'm going to show you is this giant uh, silk screen. It's called Maryland Times 100. And it's Marilyn Monroe, who was a very famous, beautiful actress a long time ago, in the 60s. So those of you who are good in math, you'll figure out how old it was when she was famous, how old she was, how old, when the times were when she was famous. Andy Warhol is the artist that did the silk screens of her, and his big thing was, I am going to do images of people who are really famous. So he had kings, and he had major rock stars, and he had queens, and he had all kinds of famous people that he loved to do his silk screens of. When you look at this painting, you'll see half of it is in black and white, and half is in color. Why did he do that? That's something for you to discuss. I want you to look at the black and white side and think about how that looks. What kind of feeling is that? What do you think Andy Warhol's saying to you? when he shows you the black and white. If you look on the other side, those are all bright colors and noticeably not human colors. And I want you to think, 
well, how does Marilyn look to you in those colors? What do you think she's trying to say? What's Andy Warhol trying to say by showing her in those bright colors? And bright colors and warm colors can be the same, like the yellows and the reds. They're warm, like a fire or the sun. Now we're gonna also look at this other painting, and this is a self-portrait. It's a portrait painted by the man who you see, and his name is Carl Schmidt Rutloff. And if you look at that painting of him, it looks quite different from the painting that we saw of Marilyn Monroe. So let's talk about, well, how is Carl feeling? Do you think, do you get the same feeling from Carl as you do from Marilyn Monroe? It's different. And he's using colors, blues, greens, kind of dull. Are those the same as the colors in Marilyn's face? And also we consider those colors cool or cold. And they do give you a different feeling, quite different than Marilyn Monroe. What's the difference? What do you think? How do you feel looking at Carl as opposed to looking at Marilyn? What are the moods? And this is something that I want you to think about when you do your portrait. So we're speaking in color, okay? So when you do your portrait, you are going to be given colors that are not human colors by any stretch of the imagination. I don't want you to mix the colors. I want you to use the colors the way you get them. So you're going to be using red, blue, yellow, the primaries, and then orange, purple, and green. And you're going to, you don't have to use all of them. You're going to say, how am I feeling today? Hmm, I think maybe orange. Maybe my hair will be a different color. It doesn't matter. You can pick whatever colors you want. We're just not mixing them. Okay, to get everybody started though, I'm going to demonstrate here the first step. And your teachers will do this first step with you, but just so you understand it, I'm gonna do it here. So everybody is going to get a piece of paper. I have to say mine's a little bit wider than yours. And you're going to draw your head. Now, when you draw your head, it has to be big enough that you can paint and put all your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth on it. We have to have room for the neck and the shoulders, okay? So I'm gonna do this and we're not gonna, and we're gonna stay like an inch from the top so you have room for any kind of hair. So I'm gonna do this giant head. And my head is a circle. It could be any shape you want of your head. So notice that I left room on the top, the sides, and the bottom. <clears throat> because the next thing I'm going to do is draw a neck. There's my neck. Do two simple lines under the chin, under the head. Okay? And then I'm going to draw the shoulders. My shoulders are going to go from the neck. You could go all the way to the edge if you want. Really, really simple. Okay? Now, the pencil lines we're gonna be painted over, so don't worry about if you feel like you messed up. Okay, I'm gonna do the eyes, and they're all, not, they're a little bit down from the top of the head. And I'm just doing, <laughs> there are my eyes, okay? Now the nose people have trouble with. I like to do a simple nose by doing a triangle just kind of a long triangle. I'm gonna do this lightly, okay? You could leave it like that. Or I, I round the corners. See how I rounded those bottom corners? And then I also make kind of a little, another little dip. That's just an easier way to do it. You can leave it as a triangle. You can make your nose however you want. Okay, mouth, I'm feeling like, well, I'm kind of happy today. I'm doing a simple mouth. You could do it however you want. This is just your guideline. What's le next? Hmm, blue, what's next? I think he said ears. Okay, so here's my big ear. Here's my big ear. And I kind of did like a long C, backwards and a forwards one, okay? And then what else is, do we need on our faces? 
I think we all have eyebrows. So I'm just putting my eyebrows there. We also have eyelashes. And if you have um, glasses, you could put your glasses on. And then we're gonna do the hair. So I'm just gonna do kind of a part and I'm gonna go behind my ears. Just really, really simple. Okay, there I am. Okay. This is what you're gonna do, the first thing you do with your project. When you're done, you're gonna paint all of this in. You're gonna paint your face, your nose, your eyes, everything in different colors, okay? Whatever colors you choose. Your hair, you could put a necklace on, you could put um, like a shirt on. That would be a good idea to have your shirt on. And you're gonna paint it in, okay? Easy as that. Just use the colors that you've been given and don't mix them, okay? They're gonna dry and then I will get them and I will um, put them together in our giant installation. They will be at Apple Tree Bookstore, which is on Fairmount and Cedar near Roxborough Elementary School. And I know they're gonna be in all different sides of town near your elementary schools too. So it's gonna be very exciting for you to see your artwork out in the world and you should be proud. So any questions, you'll ask your art teachers. I've talked to them about this and so they know exactly what to do. Have fun. I can't wait to see what you come up with and to see what the big project looks like.